Hi everyone, Paul here from FamilyWheels.ca with another car review for your growing family. And this week it's the small but mighty Honda Fit, a vehicle that I have a bit of a soft spot for because it's the first ever new car that I had the chance to buy. It's got great versatility and lots of bang for your buck, but my wife and I decided to get rid of it when we knew we had a kit on the way. Now the Fit was launched back in 2001. The third generation of this car was released back in 2014. We had a chance to test that a couple years ago on the channel and new for 2018 we have a refresh version of this third generation we've got some new safety systems now available we have a bit more clever technology on board so let's get into this latest version and see if the soft spot still prevails this week here on family wheels Well, despite this refresh for 2018, you're not seeing much of a price increase in this latest edition of the Fit. You can now get into one of the DX trims for just over $15,000, and that means that it's $140 more than the previous base version of this car up here in Canada. And that base vehicle, pretty darn basic. You're getting a rear backup camera, that's nice. You're getting a five inch infotainment system screen, Bluetooth connectivity, you get steel wheels with plastic hubcap covers. You don't see those too often these days and you get LED rear brake lights. Now the next trim level up is the LX and that's the best selling trim in Canada. That's what we're driving here this week. It adds a seven inch display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That's new for 2018 as well. We've got heated front row seats, cruise control and Wi-Fi tethering. So it's cool to see smartphone connectivity on all but that basic DX trim becoming a bit more contemporary for 2018 with the addition of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Honda's doing a good job of putting that into so many of its vehicles, but the voice recognition software is still pretty weak in this car with the infotainment system. I've been trying to throw commands at it all week with pretty limited success. One thing that's great in this latest edition, Honda's going away from that touchscreen volume control. It was highly controversial. A lot of people didn't like it. And now many of its vehicles for 2018 are going back to this old school volume knob. So no more need for complaints. We also have the reintroduction of the sport trim in the Fit family for 2018. It's giving you flashier exterior looks. You've got sporty body moldings on the outside. The interior is treated to red stitching all throughout. But if you're expecting something that's zippier, it's not going to be any different in terms of powertrain. All Fit share exactly the same underpinnings. Now, if you want creature comforts, that's when you have to get into the EXL Navi. That's the top of the line trim. L stands for leather. Navi obviously stands for navigation. It's the only trim that you can get leather in. It's also the only trim that gives you things like automatic climate control, satellite radio, and navigation. But I'd almost feel inclined to splash out on that EXL trim, if only for the leather seats, because just like the fit that we owned years ago, Honda still has managed to find this material for the cloth seats that is this mysterious magnetic type fabric that holds on to dog hair and dirt and messes like no other seats that I've come across. We had our dog back here earlier this week and I spent a good half hour trying to clean the back of this thing afterwards. And there's really no getting around this. The interior on the Fit does feel cheap and it's been this way ever since it was first launched in the early 2000s. Lots of cut rate, tacky feeling plastics. The elbow rests, man, they hurt. They are hard. There's no padding there in the doors whatsoever. Even the carpets feel really, really cheap. One thing I'm also not crazy about that's new for 2018 is the new instrument cluster that's right in front of the driver. At first glance, it looks really cool, but I've actually kind of been flirting with a migraine in this car all week because we've got this three-dimensional speedometer right in front of me here. Every 20 kilometer mark is lifted off of the speedometer and it gives you this three-dimensional effect. It might not bother you at all, but take this thing for a test drive and see if it's something that's going to be a concern for you. 
Now, one thing I've complained about in the past with the fit is interior noise, and Honda has improved on that for 2018. We've got better cabin insulation. We have laminated glass as of 2018 as well, and it has cut down the noise in here. We're averaging this week about 64 decibels at 100 kilometers an hour, which is far better and really respectable for this category. Speaking of things that I like about this interior, it's something that I've always liked about the fit, and that is outward visibility. No blind spots whatsoever to be concerned about with this car. It looks great out the back window. I'm a tall driver up here. I've got lots of headroom, and that's one of the big reasons why I did pick this car when we bought it back in 2009. Another thing that has separated the fit historically from its competitors is its steering feel, its cornering ability. For a small entry-level hatchback, it's surprisingly nimble, and that's been further improved for 2018 with improved body reinforcements and some better steering rigidity. And the result is a car that I've had a lot of fun with in the corners this week, and that's made even better because of these seats. They've actually got really good bolstering for a car at this price point. They hold you nicely through the corner and we've got nice firm foam in this vehicle. It supports you nicely and it doesn't feel like it's gonna break down over time. But that, unfortunately, is kind of where the sportiness ends in the fit. This four liter, one and a half liter engine puts out 130 horsepower in the six speed manual option in this car, or you get 128 horsepower in models that are equipped with a continuously variable transmission. And if it were my money, I would most certainly go for that six speed manual. We drove a manual version of this car when we owned our fit, and it made a big improvement to the general kind of sportiness and fun of the vehicle. You can kind of get as much as you possibly can out of what little power this car has. Now, 85% of people in Canada do choose to go with a continuously variable transmission. And yes, if you've got a lot of stop and go traffic in your daily commute, or if fuel economy is important to you, you're gonna get better fuel economy numbers out of the CVT version of this car, but it's gonna take away that fun factor. One thing that's also probably gonna sway your opinion a little bit as of 2018 is that all models in Canada of the fit sold with a continuously variable transmission also include the Honda Sensing Package. That gives you things like lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, and forward collision mitigation braking. That's a nice suite of products to have on a vehicle like we've got here today when our CBT equipped LX trim coming in at just under $20,000 up here in Canada. Now let's talk about that fuel economy for a minute here because Honda says that in CVT equipped versions of the fit, you should see between 5.9 and 7 liters per 100 kilometers as your average. But we're actually seeing numbers that are a bit higher than that here this week. And granted, yes, we are in snowy roads right now, but we've still seen 7.4 liters per 100 kilometers as our average over this week. And that puts us right up towards Subaru Crosstrek territory, a vehicle that does give you a bit more space and also offers full-time all-wheel drive. But you know, for me, the biggest selling feature in the fit has got to be what's going on behind this first row of seats. Honda has put so many tricks up the fit sleeve. We've got this amazing magic seat system, which has been around in the fit for a while now. It gives you all of these different configurations, including the ability to flip that second row seat up, giving you this great big storage area if you're not using those second row seats. And if we do have those seats in their regular seating configuration, I've actually got enough room back there to sit comfortably as a six foot two tall guy, even when my driver's seat is set the way that I need it. The downside though is headroom. The second row doesn't quite have enough for full size tall adults like myself, but for young kids, it's gonna be great back there. And also, I'm kinda of eating a little bit of crow in this car because a rear-facing car seat is actually handled really well. And as I said off the top, that's the reason why we got rid of our fit in the first place. We're measuring, with the rear-facing car seat in place, 28 and a half inches from the back of the front seat cushion up to the glove box. And that's the same kind of measurement that I've seen in a seven-passenger midsize SUV like the Toyota Highlander. That is remarkable. 
Honda's way of giving you all of this space is by doing clever little things. Like rather than putting the gas tank in the back end of this thing, they've actually got it under the first row of seats. And that means that you've got far more room to play with in the back end of this car. It also means that you've got 470 liters of trunk space behind the second row. That is a lot for a car of this size. And it means that our full size 80 pound dog can fit back there without issue. So can our standardized trunk test. That's a diaper bag, a stroller, two bags of groceries, a backpack and a soccer ball. And if you need even more cargo space, you flip that second row down and you have nearly 1500 liters of cargo capacity. This is an example of how good this car is at taking stuff. Earlier this week, we took a trip to Costco. The dog came along, so she had the trunk area. We had a three and a half year old in a front facing car seat, two full size adults in the front row. And I used that magic seat configuration to put a full to the brim Costco carts worth of groceries behind me here behind the driver's seat and not a single one of us felt like we were being pinched and that despite what are a few lumps from the fit let's be honest it's not a perfect car but it's that capability that really sets this car apart from its competition and I'm not saying here that you should go and get rid of your minivan but if you're looking for a good secondary vehicle or something as an about towner then you got to add the fit to your list because it's a remarkable little vehicle it kind of reminds me of a sale boat where you've got limited space and you've got to put ingenuity to the test. You've got to come up with little ways to make the most of that space. Honda's done that with this car and that's what really impresses me about it. But I'd like to know what your thoughts are on the fit and how you think it stacks up to the competition. What you're missing in this 2018 that you'd hope Honda might throw into the mix. Leave a comment below, subscribe while you're at it, and then check back seven days from now where we're going to be in another Honda vehicle, the latest edition of the Accord. It's looking very sleek very elegant for 2018. That's going to be in about seven days from now. And until then, have a great week.